Hmm, g'day, Tragic here, and welcome to Arkham Horror. This is the first game I'm playing with my new mod. It's made mainly a test. There is a chance that there'll be some bad bug, because this, this is a play test to test the mod that may end the game prematurely, but I'm pretty sure that won't happen. But we're going to be playing Arkham Horror, which is one of my favorite games, hence why I made this mod. And I'm going to be doing just the raw core set. Okay, so that is the AH gates, the AH monsters, AH investigators, and that's it. We're not going to have any external stuff. And that's the way I'm going to do this as a progression series. As I slowly build up the mod, I'll do one video for each and just add the expansions as I go. So that's the setup. So let's build the pool using my... Arkham Horror Core. You can see it's added all the stuff and because this is a computer game, I'm well computerized version I should say, I'm going to actually play with eight characters because I have never done that ever. I've never played an eight player game. I don't even know how an eight player game would really work. I can't see it really even being possible to win with an eight player game so we'll see how it goes because basically you've got your limits here right uh well i'll talk about that later let's just set this up now i'm gonna make a little app to align these boards a bit easier but for the moment let me just get all the setup nice and neat okay so i've just got everything set up and we're going to play with a random goo. So let's just shuffle that. And yablamo. And we get Yog Sothoth. Ooh, the key in the gate, baby. Okay, so his ability is the worshippers have powerful magic abilities. Cultists have magical immunity and a combat rating of minus one. So just makes the cultists all a little bit more hardcore. They're all basically spellcasters. Not a problem. Okay, and I'm gonna randomize all my investigators. So let's just run the setup and get into it. Yablamo. Who do we get? We get Harvey Walters, Jenny Barnes, Amanda Sharp, Vincent Lee, Dexter Drake, Gloria, Caroline Fenn, and Mandy Thomas are all added to the investigation. Excellent. Okay, let's just get rid of this and the chat window. We don't need that now. Okay, so Harvey Walters. Harvey is a visiting professor at Mr. Tonic University. With doctrines in history and archaeology, he has uncovered several interesting artifacts over the years and learnt a little of the arcane arts. Recently, by carefully studying the papers and talking to people in the streets, he has begun to detect a disturbance in the city, something that could potentially herald the arrival of something unthinkable from beyond space and time. Checking his notes, Professor Walters prepares himself for one last trip into the streets of Arkham to confirm his theory. If he's right, it could spell the end of everything. I'll have to fix this uh, button so it doesn't get in the way of the stories. See, this is why I'm playing the tests. Okay, so G uh, we, we might do the setups all in one go. Uh, so he starts with five clues and one, uh, five dollars and one clue, and he gets two unique items, two spells, and one skill. And his ability is. He reduces all sanity losses he suffers to one to a minimum of zero. And he's got a focus of two, which is awesome. Okay, so he starts in the university here, and we have a clue here. And what I might do, he actually has $5. It's $3 to get a Twilight Lodge membership. So I'm going to give him uh, three movement. And then I'll give him Law and Luck, and I'll give him a Fight. I don't really need to fight. I might just give him a Will. There we are. Because remember, he's got two Focus. Okay, and he gets two Uniques. Oh, wait. Uh, I have to put a 
there's an error in the mod, needs a shuffle at the beginning of the setup. So we need uh, two uniques and two items. Two unique items and two spells and a skill. Okay, so we get sneak, that's good for him. Wither, shriveling, excellent. Necromonicon, excellent. And naming of the cults. So he has a lot of cool stuff to begin with. Excellent. Jenny Barnes, my favorite. Jenny Barnes, for those of you that do not know, where she starts, she starts at the train station is in every single single version of Arkham Horror she is in the game. She's one of the only investigators who's been in every single incarnation of the Arkham Horror games like Elder Sign, Eldritch Horror, Arkham Third Edition, Mansions of Madness, etc etc. Okay. Several months ago Jenny was visiting I can't Panama maybe? <laughs> I've got to fix that. Uh what am I to do? Can I do this? No, it doesn't help. I'll have to fix this. She received a letter from her sister, Isabel. In it, Isabel rambled incoherently, writing about men in dark cloaks, following her wherever she went, and of hoof prints in the wind, left by an enormous goat. The outside of the envelope was partially stained with blood, and it was mailed from Arkham. That was the last letter from Isabel she received. Jenny has since returned to the States, coming to Arkham to find her missing sister. Stepping off the train from Boston into the dark autumn night, she believes that her sister was abducted by a strange cult and is determined to find her and thwart the plans that took her, even if she has to save all of Arkham in the process. Okay, Jenny is pretty awesome. Jenny gains a dollar in upkeep. I'm just going to give her that dollar straight away so I don't forget. She has a focus of one, unfortunately, but she has quite a lot of uh, power. So I think I'm going to give her three. I'm going to give her four luck. And she is at the train station. So it's one, two. Oh, look, we've got a lot of people up the top, don't we? Got two down here, one down here, one down here. Yeah. So this area here doesn't have really anyone near it. So she needs to get one, two, three, four. She needs four movement. Has she got full movement? No, she can only get a total of three movement. So I'm going to give her three, and we might focus that back to two. Okay, she gets two common items. She gets one unique item. She gets one spell, and she gets one skill. Plus speed, thanks. Oh, plus luck, excellent. Luck is a really undervalued skill in this game. Oh, motorcycle, beautiful. And the Derringer, excellent. Motorcycle is two extra movement points. Nice. Okay, Amanda Sharp. Amanda has been a student at the Mississippi U for two years now. On her way to talk to one of her professors last month, she saw a painting in the hallway that captured her attention with its hazy depiction of some horrible creature rising out of the ocean. Ever since, Amanda has heard strange whispering in a foreign language whenever her attention drifts. More disturbingly, she has begun to dream of the vast green depths of the ocean and the terrible alien cities that lie in its darkest crevices. This evening, as she finishes her shift at the bank teller for the first Arkham National, something out of the night calls to her, something dark and sinister that leaves the feel of sea foam in her mind and makes her grasp with the effort of resisting it. Leaning against the brick wall of the bank, Amanda realizes that she has to find out what's happening to her or she's going to fall prey to whatever alien presence is invading her mind. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Anytime Amanda draws one or more cards from a skill deck, she can draw an extra card and discard one of the cards. Okay? Now, she starts with a dollar and a clue, and she starts with some random items, of course, like everyone else. She gets one common, one unique, one spell, and two skills. But remember, because of her ability, she actually draws three, because she always draws one extra. So that is 
one common, one unique, one spell, and one, two, three skills. Okay, what have we got for her skills? She is a 5-5. Five, five. She doesn't have a lot of... See, this is a great spell for... A uh, great skill for spellcasters. What did she get? She got heal. Oh, Flute of the Outer Gods. This is awesome. Lose three sanity and three stamina and discard Flute of the Outer Gods before making a combat check to defeat all monsters in your current area. This does not affect Ancient Ones. That is such a good spell for cleaning up the board later on when the real scary stuff comes out. She's also got an automatic, which is one of the, the better common weapons as well. So she's got a really good set of cards here. Oh, I forgot to do her things. Uh, yeah, so she's up here at the bank. So she needs two movement. So two movement to get to the clue. She needs a decent fight and she gets a focus of three so she can basically just be whatever uh, I'll give her a law of three okay anyway so now we get to pick one two of these and one to get rid of so let's get the exhaust to reroll combat and let's get plus one will Okay, over to Caroline Fenn. Caroline Fenn is a first year resident at the sanatorium in Providence. Over the past six months, she has been studying the dreams of her patients using hypnosis. One patient in particular gave her vivid and disturbing descriptions of his dreams, right up until he was murdered with a strange knife that closely resembles something from one of his nightmares. Disturbed and frightened by his murder, Caroline dug back through her notes, poring over them late into the night. Finally, she found some subtle clues that led her here, to Arkham, where he was previously an inmate in Arkham Asylum. Someone here has to know why a harmless man was murdered for talking about his dreams to a psychologist. <laughs> this is the best game ever. Okay, so she's rich because she's a, a, a shrink. And she has a whole bunch of stuff. And she's got a great ability. She may restore one sanity to herself or another character in her location. Okay? You can't go above maximum sanities. But that's uh, that's pretty awesome. So she can heal sanity, which is awesome. Okay, so she gets two unique, two common, one skill. Okay. Luck plus one, excellent. Another motorcycle. Probably have to trade that off. A tome and a holy water and a sword of glory, my gosh. This is one of the best weapons in the whole game. But unfortunately... Yeah, so cultists have magical immunity, which means this magical weapons are no good. Immunity in this game is as no damage at all. You're completely immune. Oh, and I forgot to do a thing, so we'll quickly do that as well. She also needs, uh, she also needs two. One, uh, she needs three. One, two. Three. Yeah. I th one, two, three. Yeah, I think she, get, uh, one, two, three, four. She, how, what, how much movement she's got? She, oh, wait, she's got the motorcycle, right? So she's actually got five movement. So let's go here. Because she's got quite a lot of weapons. So she can get sucked through a gate. We're not going to worry. So we'll give her a good, decent will. And we'll give her a high luck. Mandy Thompson. Mandy came to Arkham several years ago for work as a researcher for Mr. Tonic University. Since then, she has worked with many of the university professors, delving into esoteric tomes filled with scientific information, historical reports, and sometimes even occult ramblings. It was while reading an old book of prophecies last week that she first felt she had stumbled onto something big. Mandy came to believe that certain signs and portents described in the book were taking place in Arkham, right now. 
omens that indicated the return of a terrible being referred to as an ancient one, which would grind the cities of man beneath its loathsome tread. Nothing gets past Mandy, man. She's completely on it. She knows exactly what's going on. <laughs> Tonight, the full moon has turned blood red, which is the final omen of the return of the ancient one. Slipping into the night and armed with her knowledge of the prophecy, Mandy has decided to see if she can defy fate and stop these events from taking place. She's one of the best, one of my faves. She has two common, one unique, one skill. Oh, and I didn't do her abilities. Let's quickly do her abilities. Where's Mandy at? She's at the university. So she needs two movement, right? So she needs two. And let's give her a high law. And we'll give her a decent fight and will. Okay, so exhaust to evade us uh, to evade. That's good. Pallid mask, another plus to evade. Look at this. So we've got plus to evade, and we've got reroll evade stealth uh, evade check. So they combo really well. Excellent. She's got a derringer, which is not a bad little gun, and we've got a lucky cigarette case. Okay, so she hasn't got the best of items, but her uh, skill and that one combo very nicely. Gloria Goldberg, where is she? She's up in, uh, so we've got, what have we got here again? So she's coming to here, one, two, three, four, five, or five. We've got her going to here, we've got her going to here. So this chick needs to go, we want to get her down to the magic shop kind of area. So she can go one, two, three to the black cave. So she needs three movement, basically, to suck up all, hoover up all these spells. So speed of three. Uh, what's her ability? Oh, she's got an outer world encounter ability. She has a couple of spells, so I think I'll do a three, three for spells and fight and will, we'll do a two, three. Okay, as a young girl, Gloria was haunted by terrible visions. After years of visiting doctors and some therapy, she learned to control her visions somewhat by writing stories. Her weird, disturbing fiction somehow spoke to the public in these troubled times and has made her a best-selling author. This evening, while leaving a book signing she's attending in Arkham, she was knocked to the ground by a most powerful vision she's ever experienced. Gloria saw the sky tear open and a huge and monstrous form pour out of the very air itself, wreaking untold havoc and killing thousands. As she sat on the ground with her arms wrapped around herself, Gloria knew somehow that this vision was real and that it would come to pass unless she did something about it. Now she finds herself in a half run down diner, sipping coffee and trying to decide what to do next. Okay, she gets two common, two spells and one skill. Okay, oh, plus one speed, beautiful. Voice of Ra, this is an extremely good spell. You may cast an exhaust again, plus one to all skill checks for the rest of the turn. Awesome. And only costs uh, one sanity. Wither, a shotgun, and the Tommy gun. So she has an absolute truckload of power and physical weapons. You've got to trade those weapons off. Okay, Dexter actually starts with shriveling. And his ability is kind of similar to uh, Am uh, was it Amanda's. Yeah, Amanda's ability. So his ability, when he draws spells, he gets to draw an extra one. After, oh wait, I've got to do the, do his thing. So he should be at the magic shop. Okay. So I think I'll give him two movement. We'll give him uh, high will. And we'll give him a high law. He has a focus of two. Okay. After returning from his stint in the army in World War I, 
Dexter became a stage musician and proved to be very successful at his trade, but he always longed to find real magic. As they say, be careful what you wish for. Years later, in a rundown store, Dexter came across a burnt and torn fragment of the Necromonicon itself. Intrigued by this ancient piece of occult knowledge, Dexter began to use his wealth in search of the truth about the ancient lore, and what he found horrified him. Now, the more he learns, the less he wants to know, but his studies have led him to believe that a great evil will soon arise in Arkham. He knows that he may well be the only person with the ability to stop this evil from swallowing up the world, so he has come to the sleepy town to speak with the proprietor of the Ye old Magic Shop, one of the few magic shops that contain true lore and not merely stage tricks he once studied. And not merely the stage tricks he once studied. Okay, so one common, one item, two spells and a skill. So that's one common, one item and a skill. And because of his ability, he gets to draw three skills, uh, three spells, beg your pardon, and choose two of them. One, two, three. Yeah, blah. Okay. Voice of Ra is very good. Wither is very good too. What's this one again? Cast an exhaust to lower a monster's toughness by one to a minimum of one and ignore all of its special abilities other than magical immunity. Okay, so that is very good. So we're definitely going to take that one. And the question is, do I want plus three to combat, plus six to combat. Sanity costs zero. You know, I said Voice of Ra is really good, but I think I'm actually going to take Wither so he can dual wield spells. Because we won't use this one unless we have to. But when we can we can get six, nine dice with him now. Bam. Okay, and last but not least is Vincent, who has a very similar ability to Caroline. Uh, he can basically heal other characters. But he has to be in the location. It's not like the other games where he can heal anyone on the board. There's a lot more, a lot less forgiving old Arkham Horror. Okay, what you got for us? A Yale graduate of medicine, Vincent, has moved to Arkham from Boston to practice at St. Mary's Hospital. Since coming to Arkham, he has seen far too many horrible and unexplained deaths, an elderly victim torn apart by unknown wild animals, a healthy young man whose heart exploded, and many others. Their faces haunt his dreams, especially the young man's terrified expression. After all this, small wonder that Vincent has begun to wonder if there's something sinister going on in this quiet Massachusetts town. Okay, as someone who uh, dabbles as an amateur writer, I have to say, using wonder that many times in a sentence is just ridiculous. After all this, small wonder that Vincent began to wonder. What are you talking about? Who wrote this? <laughs> anyway, whatever. Tonight, Dr. Lee made the decision to investigate the mysterious... Tonight, Dr. Lee made the decision to investigate the mysteries of Arkham and stop the strange deaths. He is determined to see this through, even if in doing so, he becomes another puzzle for the next doctor who comes to Arkham. Okay, so he is also down here, and he's going to go to the Historical Society, so he needs three movement... Bam. And I think he basically needs it two. He's only got he's got two focus. And I'll give him a luck of three. There we go. So he gets two commons, two spells, and a skill. Beautiful, he gets a plus to fight. He gets flesh ward, he gets fine gate. Excellent. Hmm, I have to look that up. I can't remember whether Fine Gate actually explores it or not. And we have a plus evade, and we have a revolver. So he's got a pretty decent little setup as well. Okay, so we are set up and ready to go. I'm going to draw the first Mythos card, and then call the setup video over, and then we'll get into the next one next time. So let's uh, draw the first Mythos card. It is a headline. We have a gate at the Black Cave. So, get a Doom Token. A gate at the Black Cave. Yablamo. Plus 
Plateau of Lang. Now, we are playing eight, eight uh, people, right? So we actually have to draw two monsters per gate opening, not one. So you kind of read these in a weird way. Uh, it's not a particularly well designed card. So you read the gate, the gate opens, then you place the clue, then you move the monsters, then you do the text. Okay. But because the clue doesn't really affect much, I usually just do it like monster spawn, uh, gate monsters, and then the text, whatever. Let's do it. So for the movement, we have white moving on, uh, the octagon things. We've only got moons. So there's no moon monsters, so nothing moons moves. And a clue appears at the roadhouse. And all monsters in the south side streets or locations are returned to the cup. Which is unfortunately down here. Okay, so that's the first mythos phase opened and one more thing we need to do is just work out our limits so because this is an eight player game we need uh, if there's five oh look at that there's a, another bug yep that's a bug looks like there isn't a snap point there uh, yeah so because we're playing an eight player game if we need six elder signs to win but only five gates open to start the final battle so that's uh, pretty bad the outskirts is even worse there is no outskirts bam so it's eight players eight minus the player count and because we have eight players we have no outskirts that means we have to be absolutely brutal with our monster killing because any gate burst will basically raise the terror level this is why I think it might be impossible to win with eight players. And the monster limit is, it doesn't, you know, really matter because uh, it is players plus three, which is 11. So what you do when you have a monster search is you place a monster at every gate evenly based on how many gates you have. But if the gate count is lower than the player count, you put one for every player so basically at a minimum we have eight monsters coming out every surge and our limit is only 11 as you can see so it's going to be very 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 hard and that my friends is the start of the uh that's that's it so that's the start of arkham horror eight player corset and I'll see you guys next time.